Okay, no well, welcome. We'll make a, bit of, we'll make a start then because we've only got 55 more minutes and I'm just conscious of everybody's time. But um, thank you for making the effort this morning and um, very generous um, with, your, with your time. Appreciate everybody's busy. Um, not sure if this this time's going to work moving forward because a lot of people obviously have got high priorities of what they're doing and stuff. So, um, but welcome. I'm I'm on Gadigal country today, and uh, my name's David Burns. So, um, a little bit about me. Uh, I run a, a social enterprise called Collective Leisure. Um, been in Australia for what 14 years now. Uh, so still still have got my English accent. And um, I've been kicking about in the leisure, health, well-being um, kind of social space for for for, for, for about 21 years. Um, but very passionate about um, physical activity and supporting those most in in need. Um, so many who are on the call today uh, were at our inaugural Western Sydney Moving event, which was in June, which was a, a few months ago now, and. Um, uh, I would have liked to have um, connected with you uh, a little bit earlier, but I had to go back to the UK for family reasons and I've been over there for two months, but I've, I've just got back a, a week ago. So just just getting back into it. Um, before I go on, actually, if you could just add where which organisation you're from um, on your name, that would be that would be really good. So everybody could get an idea of who we've got from across the system here. Um, but the the intention of the Western Sydney Moving event was to bring together uh, stakeholders from across the physical activity ecosystem, um, uh, where you, we all have uh, different intersection points, uh, and and really looked to see if we could build a coalition and a collaboration of us all working together, um, maybe a little bit better um, with our common purpose of, of obviously getting people more active. Um, and, and on that, um, we had uh, we had 57 people there um, and we had a range of um, participants, um, as most of you will have known. Um, but we had some presentations from Professor Dr. Uh, Professor Bellew from Sydney University. We had Laurie Maud from CEO of uh, Outdoor New South Wales. And um, we had Bryce from Blacktown City Council who's on the call today, um, Janine Dawson from the local health district, um, and the Western Sydney University as well with Emma George, um, who was who was attended. So it went really well, um, and there was a genuine commitment there to to look at a, a I think a whole of system um, initiative to reduce physical inactivity within Western Sydney, um, which I'm very passionate about um, in terms of the work that 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 I do. Um, so the the intention of today was a follow up to that, and one of the outcomes from the from the uh, um, from the event that we had in June was to set up a, a community of practice. Um, so I would like to talk a little bit about that today and what that is. Um, and this is really informal. Um, and then m maybe go around the 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 group here. Um, for about two two minutes um, to, to just share, you know, the work that you do um, and your organisation and, and where you kind of kind of fit in. Um, and then we're really lucky to have um, Yvonne um, Laird here from Sydney University, um, who's going to talk a little bit about um, citizen science approach, because um, we're thinking that could be an opportunity for us within Western Western Sydney. Um, and then, yeah, just talk about anything that's that's coming up for us. And, it, you know, if this is something that we could um, work collaboratively on and then and then maybe have, you know, um, a, a recurring meeting. Um, so how does that sound? That sound all right? Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Getting some nodding heads. So, so that's good. Um, so um, why a community of practice. Um, so I'm not sure if any uh, of you guys has been involved in community of practices before, um, but community of practices, are, um, they're, they're, they're an opportunity to bring groups of people together who share a concern or passion for something they do and learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. 
So we're obviously all passionate about physical activity and and and, and know the benefits of that. Um, and that that little, um, I suppose, I'll just let Tatiana in. Um, that little overview was from Etienne Wenger, who's the godfather of community practice. And I think that really describes it really well. So um, it's a group of people who share concern or passion for something they do and learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. And now with um, community of practices, and um, I've not really been involved in any before, so that's just a, a, a disclosure. Um, but they're, they're about... Um, uh, the real distinction is that, um, that there, it's, a, it's a method of, of pulling people together um, that is quite unique. Um, and they, they have three main things. So there's a domain and um, there's a community and there's a practice. Now, the domain, um, firstly, it's not just about bringing a group of friends together um, or just a network of connection. Um, it's 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 more than that. It's about an identity that is a shared domain of interest. So for us, it's physical activity. OK, um, and the membership of that applies to, you know, a commitment of shared competency and um, so to speak, uh, you know, from the people within it and uh, a real commitment. Now, that second piece is about the community bit. And, and you know, we all have um, our interest of, of, of physical activity, but it's about bringing us together um, and really looking at reducing physical inactivity within Western Sydney, in the Western Sydney area. Um, and what we would do through this community of practice would be, you know, we'd engage in discussions and um, we'd share information. Uh, help each other and build relationships that hopefully just let somebody else in. Welcome, James. Um, um, really, that would look at, yeah, just supporting each other, enabling each other and learning from each other. Uh, and I suppose the last piece is about practice. So it's not just a merely, merely about a community of interest. For example, we all like the same films or, you know, we like the same rugby league team. Um, but it's about a community that people are practitioners or policy makers and we share stories, we share our experiences, our, our resources, our tools, and we even maybe co-create tools um, to discuss the ways of addressing, you know, reoccurring problems. So for us, it's about reducing physical inactivity. Um, so this may take time um, and, you know, to, to interact. Um, and I suppose that the biggest benefits um, I, I see are, you know, peer-to-peer -peer learning. So we learn from each other. It's that continuous learning. Um, you know, we'll build new relationships. We'll develop them. Um, you know, maybe people that are not necessarily in your network who you've been connected with. Um, and hopefully we can come up with some innovative solutions because um, there's some great stuff happening out there. Um, but it's about knitting it together a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, building a building a, col a collaboration. So, um, does anybody have any questions or has got any experiences on um, community practices that you would like to share? Sorry. So, Peter McHugh, Office of Support. Um, I've, I've been part of a community of practice that has had representatives of physical activity policymakers for, around Australia from. 2005 on and it's still going so it's um it's it's not a new it's not a new thing and it's just it's a really useful for um we we've tried actually to wrap it up many times and it's um just because people are interested in it it continues and so um uh, i i i think a couple of the important ingredients is that people obviously perceive the value that the the information sharing opportunity uh, and usually that that's what, why why that one's continued. Everyone just really enjoys hearing what other people are doing and picking up ideas and sharing resources from it. So just a, a, a you know a quick reflection on how they can be really successful. And and your comment about citizen science, I I, I think that's something that really um, has got some merit and, and well worth exploring. Uh, and, and actually one other point about that the. Um, the longevity of that that community that that's kept going of a community of practice is that we often invite a um a speaker of some description uh to to start the meeting and then have reflections about that as well so yeah just some thoughts 
you know, really appreciate that, that that feedback, and I think that that best practice sharing um, with a presentation from somebody, or you know, would be a, would be something really worthwhile. Because um, I know from this group, and I know a lot of you, is the fantastic work that that you do, and and uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to get a little bit of a snippet of that as we as we go around the ground. So, um, if you're okay with it then i'll um I'll, I'll move on and i'm just gonna go along and, and just shout out um somebody's name and uh, yeah if you could just give us a, a, a two to three minutes i think we've got about three minutes given how many how many people we've got on yeah t tell us why moving is important to you and um and, and and then a little bit about your organization or anything that you think is relevant to, to this group so I'll, I'll start with ben ben smith Great. Thanks, David. Caught me by surprise there. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ben Smith. I uh, work across the Prevention Research Collaboration at the University of Sydney and the Western Sydney Local Health Districts. So I'm based most of the time in the Western Sydney region. And uh, what does physical activity mean to me? Wow. Um, it, it's pretty much a staple of my life and uh, I, you know, I need it, need to be active to feel well in, in all different regards. Uh, and uh, it's been a big part of my social life too. Uh, so in terms of uh, my work, uh, I've been involved. Uh, I've come back to New South Wales from Victoria. I haven't been there for a number of years and uh, was in working with Musculoskeletal Australia and Vic Health, some of you, an organisation some of you may know, uh, in supporting and evaluating their um, community sport and active recreation programs. So I'm very passionate about the opportunities um, that physical activity provides for people who are socially isolated and who have um, uh, you know, health challenges in their lives and have seen up close the significant benefits that can provide. So in Western Sydney, I'm, I'm really passionate about trying to enable partnerships um, and pathways, I think is the word I was looking for, into uh, organised physical activity and sports for isolated people and people who have health challenges, people with disabilities, uh, because not only the physical benefits, but the really significant mental and social benefits and and life opportunities that come from that. So I think it's a fantastic initiative and I'm really happy to be able to be part of it. Thanks, Bill. And yeah, we're really, really um, grateful for the support of Sydney University. And um, yeah, thanks for your, uh, yeah, your input. And uh, I'll I'll leave Yvonne and because we're going to come to you at the end. But um, so next is Naomi Blair. Hi, I'm Naomi. Um, I work for Mood Active. We're an exercise for mental health organisation. Um, no surprise there. Uh, why getting moving is important to me, um, just to get that mood lift to start feeling good. Um, not just get the endorphins going, but I find it helps me and our participants think a bit more clearly, um, go out and and have a better day and a better week. Where where are you based? Um, we are virtual, but we are based in inner Sydney. Okay, great. Okay, um, thanks for thanks for joining, uh, Jessica. Thanks, Dave. Um, uh, hi, everyone. I'm Jess. I'm from Sport New South Wales, which is the um, peak body for state sporting organisations in New South Wales. We, um, I'm here. Uh, I really love the collaborative approach to this, and a lot of what Sport New South Wales does is um, not trying to reinvent the wheel ourselves. We like to connect people through networks, through knowledge share, um, so that people can work together for better outcomes. I'm also based in Parramatta. Um, I'm a proud Western Sydney girl and um, have seen local, you know, sport and how it connects cultures and communities and things like that. So um, love the benefits of sport far past the, just the physical, very much the social and the, um, the sense of belonging that it can give people. 
Uh, so I am very interested to hear the outcomes of this, especially in the uh, disability space. The Sport New South Wales has some work to do next year in regional New South Wales and South West Sydney for um, opening up some more participation opportunities for people with a disability to play in sport and rec. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to hearing uh, where you're all from and uh, if there's any opportunity to connect to reach out to Sport New South Wales. Thanks. Well, that's great, Jess, and sounds like a wonderful opportunity there, um, you know, to support people um, with disability. So, yeah, if you've got any more information on that, maybe we can share it to the group or um, that, that would be, or vice versa, that would be good. Um, Bryce, one of the presenters from our first uh, event from Blacktown City Council, over to you. Thanks, David. Um, uh, just on a personal level, uh, obviously great to be involved and in, um, you know, physical activity and sports been a you know a large part of my life uh, for as long as I can remember. Um, which is obviously you know how you fall into these the professions that you do. Um, I guess just a brief update on what I presented uh, last time is that with a little bit of good weather, um, we're right out of the ground now, uh, which is very exciting uh, for you know council and all the stakeholders involved out at the sports park. Um, I guess just to reiterate the philosophies, you know, we kind of. Sh showed the group last time is you know the development that's happening at the sports park is really changing council's really seeking to change the philosophy of what the park is you know traditionally the sports park at blacktown's been a uh, a group of really nice sports facilities that are siloed and operated by you know sports associations and state bodies independently um you know with the development that's happening in the park now um, shared pathways opening to public you know public and active transport uh, we're really trying to open the park up to the community um, and a true community asset with green space um, and use the park as a way for practitioners to provide exercise as prescription um, as part of that philosophy, which is really exciting. Um, and I guess the big update uh, from last time is through the Office of Sport um, and in partnership with Disability Sports Australia, um, we've also been awarded $15 million to uh, build a an indoor, um, an indoor centre specific for seven disability sports um, that'll be uh, added to our athletic centre um, in the coming years. So um, a lot happening at the park, very exciting, but uh, really opening up the park to a lot of different groups that, you know, haven't been able to access, you know, our facilities and services in the past. Yeah, wow, Bryce, and I, I think, you know, in terms of that link with um, the social social subscri um, subs uh, prescribing stuff and, you know, with um, the Went West Primary Health Network, I think that is uh, that is really, really interesting. So, um, yeah, really chuffed that you're part of this group. And I think there's a lot of um, a lot of opportunity to share there and, and collaboration, um, you know, with people. Um, from this from this group and, and beyond. So thanks for that, Bryce. Uh, thanks, Dad. James James Ellender, award winning Active Exchange. Thanks for joining us. Over to you. Hey, David, and hi everyone. Great to see some some familiar faces out there, which is great. Um, look, we're we're really here to just to continue to listen in and play as much of a role as we can in supporting you know um, the way forward. Uh, for those that don't know, Active Exchange, um, we're a data aggregation service that's really trying to really understand the sport, leisure, recreation landscape um, and how data can help make better decisions to get more people moving. So that's core to us, um, core to what we do all around the world. So this is a really interesting project to just hone in on, see if what we've got can help, but also some of the things we've learned um, and through the project may may come to fruition. So, um, you know, we're we're launching this thing called, you know, movement data at the moment into our ecosystem because what we've known for a long time is the data that's available is very narrow. Um, we know that organised sport or, or general um, membership based activities is only one part of the picture. So we're really keen to see how we can collaborate to help tell more of a story and, and quantify um, more information to make real decisions at a, at a local government, local community situation so just great to listen in Dave and be part of however Hello. we can yeah thanks James really really interesting in terms of the movement it's, stuff uh, um it, and uh yeah uh very very exciting um so if you if you 
Yeah, if you're not speaking, if you wouldn't mind just putting yourself on mute, that'd be great. Uh, and over to, to Grace. Yeah, hi everyone. Really nice to meet you all. Um, my name's Grace and I'm from the University of New South Wales. I'm a research fellow there um, and most of my research looks at the relationship between exercise and mental health, but um, my keen interest is looking at um, how we can support people from marginalised communities to be, to be active. Um, mostly working with trauma exposed populations. So a lot of my work is with refugees and people, um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, um, and also first responders. Um, but right now I'm based out uh, in Marrickville in the inner west of Sydney. Um, and what we're doing here is we're setting up a free community gym at um, Addison Road Community Centre, which is really exciting. Um, the focus here is um, it's anyone who's attending Addison Road. So um, that the main thing they do here is a food pantry um, for, for disadvantaged people. So um, now the fact that we also are setting up a gym here, um, it's, it's really exciting. Exciting. So we're focusing on um, women from refugee and asylum seeker backgrounds, but as I said, anyone. Um, but we're at the moment we're forming partnerships with um, all sorts of all sorts of groups. So um, in lots of conversations with people from Western Sydney, lots of organisations. So really keen to be involved with this group. And if anyone, it's still in the early stages. We're hoping to actually open the doors in October, but um, still forming partnerships. So please. Um, Thanks, Grace. And I don't know if anybody's had a chance to go down to Addy Road in Marrickville, but it is a, a beautiful place um, where, where people connect, particularly from a refugee background and stuff. Um, and it's unbelievable work down there. So a gym uh, there sounds 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 fantastic. So th thanks for that, Grace. Um, I'm going to go to Charlene because uh, you see, you you really have hit the nail on the head, haven't you? Because you are moving out there. Um, I'm probably on a bike. So over to you, Charlene. Charlene, sorry, sorry. We, we can't leave. Can we go? Go on to someone else and I'll work out why. OK, cool. Done. Um, Elizabeth. Our foundation. So Charlene, I heard you right at the end there. You must have, you must have changed <laughs> <Yeah>. something. <laughs> Um, hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth Kaleja, I'm from the National Heart Foundation of Australia. I'm based in Sydney, <coughs> um, at William Street in Sydney, so the city to surf starting point, which I like every morning I get there at work. Um, but yeah, I'm the Senior Advisor for Physical Activity and at the moment really the Head of Physical Activity for the Heart Foundation. As I've got Healthy Active by Design under my portfolio, I support Heart Foundation walking with their advocacy and strategic planning, um, you know, working with uh, really cross-functionally across the Heart Foundation to make sure physical activity messaging is ingrained in all our primary products, and, you know, from heart health checks to linking to heart age calculator to working with, you know, um, a variety of things with clinical interventions and also supporting walkers. I get to still t double into, I'm an accredited exercise physiologist by training, so I get to double with supporting people in the walking program if they have some really tricky um specific advice on how to redirect them or give them you know advice to help them walk and help them to have a really enjoyable experience with heart foundation walking and you know do that with the team of the with project officers at heart foundation so yes this is a national role but i live in western sydney uh southwestern sydney actually you know born bred raised love it um worked at nepean hospital for many many years and did a lot of work out there clinically and and connecting with Janine Dawson to try and maintain our Heart Foundation walking connections with um, public health and community health in the, the local health districts as well. So uh, working across the board, uh, involved in as well with ASPA, which I know Peter McHugh is involved well with Asia Pacific Society of Physical Activity and trying to get a bit more involved to ensure that Heart Foundation is still along with the journey. Uh, and that, you know, is my role there. So really, that, that's my summary of what I do, but physical activity has been my life. I said, studied it, worked it, played many different sports, continue to be active in many, many different ways. Um, love being outside and, you know, exercising outside in the outdoors and and doing a variety of different things to, to practice what I preach <laughs> and get out there and be active because it does. It helps my mood, it helps me physically and mentally and helps to keep my kids active. So that's my other passion as well as, you know, paediatric um, obesity and physical activity in children and, and want to continue to 
to support that and the Heart Foundation. I support um, Drum Break for Heart as well to ensure our messaging is up to date and we're working on a few things on how do we get Jump Rope for Heart out into um, communities that need, who may not be one schools who fundraise, but how do we get that out there to help kids maintain their activity across the country? Oh, there's a, there's a lot of uh, experience there and um, breadth of knowledge, Elizabeth. So thank you for joining this group. And uh, yeah, the, the ASPA, Asia Pacific Society for Physical Activity, they're, they're supporting as well. And um, we will, I'll put the link into this, into the chat in a second, because that's a, a really interesting group. For, they've got events on, they've got a, um, I think a conference coming up soon. So um, yeah, people may be interested in that also. So thank you for that. Um, Charlene, can we come back to you? Can we try again? Can yes, let's comments? do it. Okay, I'll try not to cover any of the speakers on the phone. Sorry about that. Um, Charlene from Advantageous. Uh, it's my social enterprise um, business. Uh, I guess the short version is your cycling connections. Um, and it's all about creating opportunities for change for the community. So it's not just the health and well-being. Um, it's offering employment opportunities as well. And I'm fortunate enough to be working with a, um, a lecturer at Western Sydney University, uh, Dr. Nicole Pill, who's been sending all her therapeutic recreation students my way. So all the documentation's now starting to happen, which means that our business can grow. Um, back in 2017, after delivering many school programs and discovering so many children not knowing how to ride a bike, we started asking parents and discovered that part of that uh, perception is safety, hence why a lot of uh, kids aren't riding to school anymore. So these parents didn't know how to ride a bike. Once we started teaching them those um, safer riding defensive skills, they started riding. You get the ladies or the women riding, the mums, and we found that the children, the family, and then the wider community started riding. And we already know the benefits of, you know, the importance of uh, moving. I myself, I manage chronic migraines, um, and that physical activity is so important to me. Even on a really bad day, I know I've got to keep moving. Um, so we've got her cycling connection back in 2017, and that really connects with the, um, the migrant refugee community. So I do a lot of that in Cumberland uh, local government area, and then I do a lot of active transport for schools and workplaces in the Parramatta local government area. The exciting news is we're now into week five of a Riding for Positive Mental Health program. So that was funding that out New South Wales ACT was able to secure for us. Um, it's our program alongside of the Unstoppable um, Foundation. And what we've done is created a 12-week program, go for a ride for an hour, and then we come back, have lunch, and sit down and do the positive mental health. I personally am doing the program and I didn't appreciate my style of coaching and how it actually supported the community. So all that negative talk now, we can actually identify that a lot sooner and say, we can do this, let's you know break it down, make it more manageable and then build on those skills. So it's, it's really exciting to actually go through that journey. Fantastic, Charlene. Thank, thank you for sharing. And I was just thinking as you were talking there, uh, maybe in the future when we have a community of practice, we can all come for a bike ride. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Love yeah. to do that. Yeah, good stuff. Um, and I'll uh, jump over to Laura from Weplex. Hi, thanks for having me, David, and hi, everyone. Um, I'm Laura from WeFlex. So um, WeFlex is a pretty new startup. Um, what we're here to do is pretty much connect clients with a disability to the health and fitness industry. Um, so making it as accessible and inclusive as possible. Um, so we're working on both sides of not only working with personal trainers and fitness professionals, but we're also supporting um, and connecting clients as well. 
um, to their local Weflex fitness professional. So we've created like an academy for our fitness professionals to learn um, and be educated and better supported and how to best support our clients in the gym, at home, whatever, in a PT setting session. Um, and that's all kind of NDIS funded as well. Um, and then we also support our clients as well, matching them with their um, personal trainer that's local to them, also that's going to best support their health and wellbeing goals as well um, and keep moving. So, um, yeah, we can do group one-on-one type of sessions, but, yeah, we're just – there's lots of personal trainers out there. There's lots of gyms out there. We don't need to create special gyms for special people, as my boss says. Um, let's upskill the current health and fitness industry. Um, and make it just a very accessible and inclusive space for all. So, yeah, for me, movement is not only a kind of feel good as well, um, but it's also definitely that social connection with others that you create um, as well. So, yeah, feel free to connect. And um, thanks for also hosting this, David. Problem. Thanks for joining and um, super exciting reflex and uh, yeah, in lots of opportunity for impact I think in the in the fitness industry so yeah thank you for, for joining us and um, I'm going to go over to the Office of Sport again and, and Christian. No problems thanks David it's been wonderful to listen to a range of intros so far some people that I've met before and others that I haven't so lovely to be in the same forum as you all. My name is Christian Whittaker. I work as an engagement officer for our voucher programs so the active kids in the first lap voucher programs at the Office of Sport. Uh, our engagement team is a team of two. So myself and my um, colleague, Shelley Barlin. Um, priority populations that we engage with include would include significantly Western and Southwestern Sydney. I'm sure a lot of people saw the article in the Sydney Morning Herald um, recently um, that was a little interesting to read in the fact that uh, it talked about how the program is probably not uh, affecting the communities that it needs to most, but then spoke to providers in those communities about how integral it has been uh, for them. So that is core business for us uh, in the Sydney metropolitan region to work with our pool of providers, but also to work with stakeholders like local government and pretty much everyone in the room today to identify opportunities for people to offer suitable programs and increase physical activity levels for young people um, that are able to access active kids vouchers in Western and Southwestern Sydney. We, a couple of activities that we've been pursuing uh, recently is to re-engage with uh, a range of stakeholders, so state sporting organisations through the wonderful team at Sport New South Wales uh, in partnership with Jess, but also in, in terms of local government. So we've been able to engage a lot with not just the sport and recreation offices in local government, but youth, multicultural inclusion, families, women and children to really broaden um, what physical activity can manifest in terms of that local government perspective. And we're working towards developing a, hopefully might meet annually or twice a year, a Western and Southwestern Sydney local government sort of recreation forum so that we can get appropriate officers from that industry specifically to talk about what's working, what's not working and, and share ideas organically. Um, one of the, the major things that we're really keen to work with a lot of uh, gyms and small businesses and coaches and providers that apply to us to become providers, especially in Western and Southwestern Sydney, we're finding that we have to um, work a lot more closely to have suitable programs. So we're really keen to listen to a lot of people today, especially in that fitness and uh, active recreation sector, how we can pass on uh, principles of best practice so that gyms aren't just selling a program which is rock up at a gym and, and use equipment you may have never seen before, but actually talking about the lower um, fitness and physical activity literacy of people within Western and Southwestern Sydney specifically and catering to that and actually getting people to a stage where they can engage with physical activity in a more meaningful way. Um, recently, this is probably the last thing I'll say, sorry, taking a long time. We had an Active Fest event in partnership with Canterbury Bankstown Council and we had around six to 700 school children trying about 12 different activities. And the amount of kids that couldn't skip, didn't know how to jump, couldn't catch a ball uh, in sort of year four and year five really startled a lot of the development officers 
and a lot of the local government um, staff that were there on the day. So that's probably painting a bit of a picture of where we're really keen to get in and really share that message, even though we're a small team. Christine, great, great overview. And yeah, that physical literacy is so important, isn't it? Particularly for, for those, um, those groups, maybe for more disadvantaged areas or underserved communities. Um, we'll, we'll keep rolling it on. Um, Nicole Peel from um, Western Sydney University, great to see you. Hi, hi everyone. I'm not sure if you can hear me. My computer doesn't work so well with Teams. We can hear you fine. <laughs> great. Uh, yep, so my name's Nicole. I'm at Western Sydney University. Um, I notice, I think Emma's here as well. We both work there. Uh, I'm in the Health Science Faculty. I'm an academic. Um, I teach uh, the students who do health science and that's a really broad concept, um, health and science. But in essence, we teach students who are doing health promotion, public health, um, health management and recreational therapy within that program, as well as um, obviously in our first and third years, we also teach any other allied health type discipline. But um, and I guess my background, I've, I've been a practitioner most of my life, worked in um, and met maybe some of you before, but worked in many areas from sport and rec, councils, private facilities, in leisure, in recreation, uh, with varied populations from young people all the way up to the older people. Um, my focus has been on over the years, particularly people with a disability um, and people who are fairly marginalised, so at risk of imprisonment, coming out of prison. Um, uh, most recently, my work is with kids in foster care, so kids at risk and many children who have adverse adversity. Um, I come from a strengths based approach and um, in everything I do, I have a really broad definition. I'm, I don't sort of get stuck in sport. I tend to look above that and my background is actually leisure. <laughs> you might not have heard that word before, but <laughs> putting it out there because it doesn't get said enough. No. And so so that that's my focus is actually, and look, I, I don't disagree with anything anyone said, but um, sometimes I think we limit people's choices. And so I go back to that brace of leisure. My goal one day is before I leave this planet, my legacy is that we will get leisure education in schools and not PDHPE training and um, PDHPE classes. But that's a long term goal of mine. So, but I also live in Western Sydney. I teach in Western Sydney. All my connections are in Western Sydney. Everything I do is community focused. So I do it with community partners or with um, many organisations, but also with the participants themselves um, with a real focus on the outdoors. So keen to connect with anyone. Um, yeah. Got lots of research projects going just to give you an idea of where my, my head is, I guess, because it might be a bit confusing. But um, my overall brief is using leisure and recreation as a tool to improve health. So I've got a project at the moment um, using surfing uh, with post-traumatic stress veterans. Um, to improve their health. So get them out of bed, we, we use surfing. I've got another one working at Long Bay Jail with male older prisoners and giving helping them get a sense of purpose and look at their health. Um, I'm working with substance abusers in Liverpool Hospital around using art to get people physically active. Um, I work with uh, Advantageous and Charlene who was speaking earlier and we look at uh, particularly women from multicultural groups and getting them involved in cycling and people who who generally are marginalized and wouldn't consider cycling and if they didn't consider cycling would be sitting at home um not engaging with Aww. their community nicole i might just jump in if that's all right because we've got a few more to go into what we might do is the next session is get you to talk about some of the best practice that you do because there's a lot you there's a lot of um examples that you've got there and um, so sorry to jump in and um, but i'm just no conscious Okay, we've only, we've so only got 15, 15 minutes, but unbelievable work that you're doing there, um, and we definitely need to we need to share that. Um, so so thank you. Um, I'll just go to Sonia from from Tennis New South Wales. Are you there, Sonia? Hi, David. How are you? 
Yeah, good, thank you. Um, yeah, if you just give us a couple of minutes about um, you, what you do and um, yeah, why moving is important to you. Um, yeah, no, I just, I, I literally just jumped on the call two minutes ago, so I'm uh, just <laughs> getting a sense of, of what's happening. But um, yeah, to give a little bit of background, um, we, Tennis New South Wales developed an, an inclusion strategy last year. Um, and I've you know, been, been working in that team across all the various different focus groups. And really today was just about kind of, yeah, understanding a bit more around what some of the, the issues and challenges are and and listening in um, to, to some of the great work that that's happening. Um, and we're trying to build, um, I think we do, we do a lot of, we do a lot of good stuff at tennis, um, but I feel like it's more, you know, it happens more of on a one-off basis. And what we want to do is build more, more of a strategy where we can start to see that that meaningful change um, kind of um, kind of occur and you know gain gain a bit more traction. So really, today for us was just about just about listening in and and, and taking notes. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you and apologies. I couldn't join. Uh, join the call earlier. I was held up on on another call. No problem. Thanks so much, Sonia. And um, over to you, Rob, um, from Penrith. Yeah, thanks, David. Um, Rob from Penrith City Council. Uh, I'm really here. To, we've identified that we need to bridge the gaps between our city and community community resilience team. And what we really look for is the leisure and recreation space and how we build those connected, social and respectful communities. And that activation and leisure component of it for us is the key area for how we build and bridge some of those communities and bring people together in that cradle to grave philosophy for them. You, you become part of a community and that's the community that we're trying to build. Fantastic. I uh, really appreciate Penrith City Council being a part of the of the group. Um, thank you. And Mark Libertori from CPA. Are you there, Mark? No. We'll uh, we'll nip over to Tinjana then um, from volleyball. Good morning all, I'm Tiana from Volleyball New South Wales. We, uh, look, I'm very passionate about sport, health and fitness, always have been. Um, I've worked in sport for a long time. Western Sydney is very much a focus area for us and growing participation there. Um, it's one of our lowest in terms of numbers, but we've been able to slowly engage and working with councils, so we're very grateful for the connections. I think what um, we're doing here is fantastic for us all to network and work together. Uh, in our sense, um, you know, Active Kids Vouchers has been a really significant impact on getting more kids moving and adults as well, uh, especially um, in the sitting volleyball space. We're looking to implement um, disability programs and uh, sp specifically in sitting volleyball. So there's a lot of activations that we're looking to do and collaborating all together is exactly the way that we're going to get there and more people moving um, with the strategies that we do together. So appreciate being part of this conversation and thank you. Thanks so much uh, for, for joining us. And um, Emma George from Western Sydney University. Yes, hello everyone. Um, I also had to join a little bit late, but glad I could be here. Um, some of you might have heard me speak at the, the very first event that we had for this, um, so I, I will keep it very brief. But um, I'm the Director of the Centre for Male Health here at Western Sydney University, and I'm also an Associate Professor in Health and Physical Education. Um, a lot of the work that I do is around looking at how we can engage um, men in particular in healthy lifestyle behaviours, physical activity being one of those. Uh, but I also do a lot of work with uh, a lot of professional sporting organisations, just looking at how we can help them with evidence-based evaluations, but also um, designing interventions that are meeting the needs of their communities and um, approaching community engagement in a really evidence-based way. Uh, so we've got lots of connections across the Western Sydney region. I grew up in the region, so I know it very well. Um, and yeah, really excited to be here. And it's so great to hear about all the amazing work that's happening. So I'll leave it there, David, thanks. Thanks for that. And um, yeah, completely agree. Um, have I missed out anybody else? Tracy? Uh, I think that's the one. Yeah, Tracy from Sydney University. Hi, hi everybody. 
<laughs> so inspired listening to you all. You're very humbled in your presence. <laughs> um, I'm Tracy. I work um, quite closely with Ben Smith and also with Yvonne. Um, last few years I've been uh, doing a project, um, a support research basically. I'm a research officer supporting research um, in relation to systems approaches for physical activity. So it's super exciting to see something like this happening on the ground. Good on you, David. Um, prior to this, I used to work with Ben at Monash University doing some work around older adults, especially those from disadvantaged, marginalised communities, um, which really stoked my passion for improving access um, to inclusive opportunities for all. So very excited to be here. Thank you very much, David, for getting us together. Thanks, Tracy. And how could I forget Oscar? Are you there, Oscar? I think Oscar had to run. Oh dear. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Oscar's from the local health district. Um, so hopefully he'll be on uh, next time. Um, so thank you everybody for sharing. Obviously we've we've tried to squeeze that in. Um, but I think I suppose I'll just give a little bit about collective leisure. Uh, we 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 work with um, you know, I suppose uh hard to reach hardly reach and underserved communities and we do well-being programs physical health and adaptive sports programs and the physical health stuff is really um is is, is part of this project here which is um western sydney moving although that, that this is a bigger systems kind of initiative and uh, we do work on the ground as well so i'll leave it there um but i just want to reiterate why western sydney um you know and the challenge that we're trying to address you know almost 50 percent of australians have got a lifestyle chronic disease and what's most concerning as, as you guys will know is that you know the stats on um, the health of people from disadvantaged groups so particularly so low socioeconomic areas um and we might be talking about cold community or people with disability or Abor aboriginal and torres strait islanders for example um, and you know these some of these groups are, are twice as likely to, to to die from potentially avoidable causes and and diabetes i think in western sydney is about 2.6 times um you know greater than, than in other more affluent areas so um Physical activity, as we know, is such an important um, has such an important role in, in reducing some of these lifestyle chronic diseases. And physical inactivity is the fourth leading risk of global mortality, um, which is crazy. And almost one third of adults worldwide are physically inactive. So yeah, it, it has a really important role to play. So. Um, Obviously, there's some fantastic work that's happening in Western Sydney, but it's about how can we knit it together and um, and 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 try to have a bigger bigger impact. So, um, and that being said, uh, I'd like to now just give the floor to uh, to Yvonne um, to talk to us um, a little bit about a citizen science approach. Yeah, thanks very much, David. Um, really nice to hear from everyone and hear about the great work that you're doing. Um, I'm Yvonne, I'm based in the Prevention Research Collaboration, so I work with Ben and Tracy as well. Um, and I'm also a lecturer and I teach on the Masters of Public Health at, at UCIT. Um, and prior to joining the university, um, which I joined three years ago, I was based at the University of Edinburgh. And um, that's where I, I really started my career. Um, interested in physical activity, specifically looking at ways of getting girls more active. And then I kind of moved into participatory approaches and um, citizen science and how we can involve members of the public in research and in decision making. Um, so that's what I'm come to talk to you a little bit about today. Um, I just wondered if you could give me a show of hands if you've heard of citizen science before, if you could stick your hand up. OK few hands, some some people shaking their heads. All right, great. Um, well, that's really helpful for me to know. Um, well, I'll give you a bit of a of a definition of what citizen science is. Essentially, it's any kind of research that is conducted by either in whole or in part by members of the public. Um, and it's a way of getting members of the public to um, have us have more control or have more say in um, generating things like priorities. Um, so what's important to them, um, you know, involving them in collecting or analysing data um, and also um, in interpreting findings and communicating findings of research as well. 
So I'm based um, or I'm part of a project, thanks that David's just um, put a link to in the chat, which is funded by the, the Australian Prevention Partnership Centre. Um, and it's all about um, looking at how we can build capacity in using citizen science approaches amongst policy and practice stakeholders. So I, um, I work with various health promotion agencies across Australia to support them to implement and evaluate their own citizen science projects. And they're doing these in across a range of areas. Um, so some are working around um, rural walkability in Tasmania. We have other projects around unhealthy industry advertising. Um, we have community gardens initiatives. Um, but essentially, all of the organisations that I work with and support are really passionate and interested in, a, in improving how they engage with community members. That's um, kind of one of the main drivers for them for exploring the use of the citizen science approach. Um, so essentially, I'm just here to introduce myself and, and my area of work, but um, I'm very happy to talk to anyone who's interested in citizen science approaches or even come back to another community of practice session and talk about it a little bit more and maybe open up a bit of a conversation about citizen science approaches and what some of the opportunities might be for using citizen science in Western Sydney um, with a physical activity focus, if that's something that's of interest to people. Um, and I also just wanted to flag that I, as part of the work that I'm doing, um, I also facilitate a community of practice on citizen science as well. Um, so we meet every every two months and it's, um, it's similar to this community of practice, really it's an opportunity for people to share their experiences of using citizen science approaches um, and their learnings and to kind of look at how we can improve what we're doing across across Australia. Um, so our next one is in um, September. I'll just pop the link into the chat if anyone's interested in coming along to that one. Um, but the focus of that one is on si systems and um, citizen science and engaging people with disabilities and citizen science approaches. Um, so there's a, a, there's a few speakers that are coming to share their experiences of that. And um, one of the speakers is specifically um, focusing around engaging um, people on walkability and urban um, urban improvement. So it might be of interest to some of you, but it's, as I said, it's open to, to anyone who's interested in coming along. So there's a little link to the, to the event if anyone's interested. But as I said, I'm happy to come along and um, talk at a future community practice event, or, um, you know, if anyone wants to chat to me then um happy happy to do that at any point you can I'll, I'll put my email in the chat as well so that you can contact me Thanks, that was that was great very succinct and because uh, we've got only got two minutes left so i appreciate you you squashed it all in there i think there is opportunity for you to come along and maybe talk a little bit more um today's session we've 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 crammed it in with um, getting a little bit of, you know, an overview of the, the group and the breadth of knowledge and experience that we've got. Um, but I think, yes, yeah, citizen science approach could, could be a really useful way for us to, um, to to look at the work that we're doing in Western Sydney and um, yeah, ensure the impact. Uh, God, wouldn't it be brilliant if we were able to showcase all the great work that we were that we were doing, and then the data around it um, and the impact that we're having? So, um, there's a few things. Lastly, from from me, um, you know, this is this is open to anybody. Um, you know, uh, this is this. I'm, I'm doing this voluntary. Um, it's a passion because of obviously, you know, um, what we want what we want to try and do in Western Sydney and in trying to improve um, physical activity levels. Um, and I'd love any feedback from anybody in terms of, you know, is, is there anybody that we've, we, we should invite, uh, you know, any ideas on topics to, to discuss at the next one? And um, yeah, also uh, the timing of it, because there was a lot of people that would would have liked to have been here today, but obviously priorities in, in, in working hours and um, couldn't make it. So. Could we do it out of work hours, for example? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Is it is it bi-monthly? Does that work for everybody? So we do it like every eight eight weeks. Um, 
James is putting up a, 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 a thumb there, so so that's good. And um, we've got lots of ideas around what Western Sydney could look like and Western Sydney moving. And um, this is just one part of it. Um, you know, we really want to bring all the all the councils along the journey as well. But you know, just looking at the group today, we've got academia, we've got government, we've got disability, and we've got sport and rec, we've got peak bodies. Um, you know, we've really got a, a good breadth there. So um, I think it's a, a fantastic start. Um, so I'd just like to thank you all. Um, I know we've just reached 10.31. Um, was there, is there anything um, that anybody would like to, to just quickly share? All good? Fantastic. Well, thank you all for your involvement and um, I'll send you all a link to the next one. And uh, yeah, have a have a great rest of your Friday and uh, enjoy your weekend. And I'll hopefully talk to you all soon. Thanks so much. See you, everyone. Thanks, thank David. You. See, See you. Yeah. Bye.